we'd finally arrived at the Havat Gilad outpost in the West Bank, which is home to some of the most hardcore settlers. This was a community that was prepared to live at the top of a hill in the Palestinian territories in defiance of both international and Israeli law. There to tell us about their lives were Simcha and Yosef, a pair of teenagers who were busy doing what settlers in the area did best, building a house without a permit. When they hear somebody say uh, the West Bank, they think that it's a war zone, it's dangerous, you're living right next door to Arabic villages. Are you fearful for your own safety moving out here? You know, there's no fence around the settlement at all. You're kind of exposed. I don't feel any, like, I'm afraid. I have God. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, you're getting used to it, you know. You can even hear the call to prayer going now from the nearby Arabic town. <laughs> Actually, annoying. Simcha didn't seem to have much sympathy for his Palestinian neighbors or their culture. But then again, he was kind of pissed because a couple of weeks ago, they'd apparently burned down a house he'd helped build and killed his dog. Came in the morning, they saw nobody here. And came two guys and just burned the house. So after all, the, all our guys, they went to the village and started fighting there. And uh, it was a big mess, yeah. Did anybody get hurt? From our guys? No. What about from their guys? I think so. Yeah. Are friends afraid to come here? They probably, yeah. They're afraid. How do you meet girls? We don't meet girls. <laughs> That's one of the problems. <laughs> do you get lonely here? Lonely? No, I never get lonely. Start a settlement band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we're gonna just make a Jew Jewish blues, kind of uh, something like that. You plan on starting a Jewish blues band? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> You're sort of on a musical mission from God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Simcha struck me as an oddly normal teen for someone who is taking part in a blatant land grab. But the settlers don't see it that way. In their view, God had promised the Jews this land. End of story. Once you get here, you realize that there is a lot of work to do. And at the end of the day, it also gives you. You understand? More than all the people that are here, and more than all the people that are here. It also gives you. You feel you are in a place, really. What do you think the Arabs want? I think, and I know, the Arabs want to be able to do it. להאחז בשבילם מלחמה ביהדות. הם רוצים לכבוש כל שטח, הם רוצים להגיע לתל אביב, לזרוק אותנו לים כמו, ש... כמו שהם אמרו ב-48. זה בדיוק מה שהם רוצים. מלחמה תמידית בזכות הקיום שלנו ושלהם. וירשת... ויר... וירש... וירשתם אותה וישבתם בה, וכתוב מראש שיהיה מחלוקת על הארץ. וזה ידוע שתמיד יהיה מחלוקת על ארץ ישראל. כל אומה... Does it make you angry that most of the international community agrees with the Palestinians and that you shouldn't be in the West Bank? Have you personally had any problems with Israeli police? Simcha and I left Yosef to do some construction while we took a stroll around the settlement. I suppose if you do like everybody else here, you have to start your own family soon. Yeah. Well, you also have to go to the military, so how do you do both? I do military and I'm done. But you want to go to the army? Oh, yeah, I want to go to the army, yeah. Can you imagine a situation where you'd be part of a unit that was ordered to provide mm. security for a demolition? Never. No. 
What about uh, the demolition of a Palestinian's house? I'll be happy to do it. That'll be my dream. Simcha introduced me to Yair, a 19-year-old who was about to enlist in the army. Yair's house had recently been destroyed by the police, and he seemed even more vocally opinionated than both Yosef and Simcha. I wonder if you tried to look at it from the perspective of the Palestinians. Their fathers were here, their grandfathers were here, their great-great-grandfathers were here. They don't know any other country. They I might do. say, where are we supposed to go? You know how many countries of Arabs there is? 22. Okay. We have one. Now we have half of it. Not even all of it. And the little piece we have, they want to steal from us again. Would it be really stupid of me to say that the Canaanites were here before Israel? Maybe their descendants can claim to have more rights you than Jews. The Knan and the, the Knanim now? You see them anywhere? No, I'm just trying to make a them. point that, you know, history moves in many places in many different history ways. History moves. The Jewish people, again, the Jewish people didn't move a millimeter. But even Israel says this isn't your property. I feel sorry for the government that they feel that they still in Poland and Germany and want... they think, Oi, Obama, Oi, we are afraid of Obama, we are afraid of all the rest of the world. We are not in 1945 anymore, that's it. No Jew is going into the burning places anymore, that's it. Finish, done. Is it true that settlers sometimes attack a Palestinian village as a reprisal against the Israeli police destroying a settler's house? Uh... I heard about those things, but as a settler, I, I never did that, I never saw that. I have no idea what they're speaking about. I believe that it's a manipulation of the media. Every media guy has an agenda. My father always says that the only true thing in the newspaper is the date. That's it. This is my ideology. This is what I believe in. I believe that the Israeli people should live on anywhere in Israel. I headed back to meet with Simcha and Yosef, who'd taken a break from construction and were ordering a pizza from a nearby settlement called Kedumim. The goal for Chavat Gilad and Kedumim is to eventually merge and form a settlement block, which would in turn separate the Palestinian villages on either side of it. In the meantime, I headed back to Tel Aviv, across the Green Line, and into Israel proper. There's tons of soldiers and police here today because they're expecting a confrontation with the Palestinian demonstrators. Ah! 